everybody, and welcome to the Aggieville Alley Cats podcast. We're come rain, shine, or anything in between. We're here to live it to you, the Kansas State sporting news you so love. I'm Ace Edwards, right alongside Connor Baltazor. And welcome to this week's weekly recap, though I, I guess we could call it the bi weekly recap because the Catsketball previews took place of the weekly recap last week. So we actually get, I believe we're pretty close to doubling up on our normal normal take on of pretty much every sport, which at this point is just soccer and the volley cats. But before we get into soccer and volley cats, of course, we do want to thank the sponsors of the show. And that is Greg Arthur and grandma. Thank Thank you, you, grandma. Grandma. And if you want to support the show financially and have your name out at the beginning of every episode, please be sure to go visit the official supporters link found in our podcast and Twitter bios. But let's just dive straight in to the soccer cats and (laughs) Yee. <laughs> we this is yeah we don't really have a lot of good news with the soccer cats i i will fully admit that three matches only one goal and no wins between them so uh, we can start at the beginning up against byu was a one nil loss and byu's actually sort of taken a step back from where they were last year only being five five and four going into this match where I believe they were ranked like top 10 in the country last year, though, again, that, well, no, 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 they were a part of the big 12 last year as well. So I don't, I can't use the independent like boost of schedule argument. Yeah. They just, they just aren't as good this year, but of course they still managed to take K state out with the lone goal of the game in the 21st minute or 22nd minute rather as if the 30 seconds really makes a a major difference. But it's gotten to the point where, I mean, there's only, spoilers, there's only one soccer match left, and it happens the night that this episode releases. So we kind of are at that point where I think K-State is at the bottom of the Big 12 standings, almost certainly. And I think it's bottom four, don't make the tournament now with the expanded field. So, I mean, at this point, they're just playing for pride and vibes. But still, you you would like them to show – well, I'll, I'll do the uh, show some more fight argument when we get to the last match. But, yeah, the, a 1-0 loss to BYU, which, you know, happens. Yeah, um, really not a lot to say uh, from this game. Uh, K-State did get 10 shots off, four of them were on goal. BYU had 17 shots, and 12 of them were on goal. Uh, Corners weren't super disparate, nine corners for BYU to K-State's five. Um, Fouls were fairly even, eight to six. Uh, So this does have the makings of a match, which BYU was probably the better team, but K-State wasn't really that far out of, and the score reflects that there's been a lot of matches this year where K-State has really fought tooth and nail to at least get a draw and just haven't quite been able to pull it off. And that's kind of been the story of conference play uh, for the most part uh, for this K-State soccer team. A lot of one-point losses um, and a few draws here and there in some matches that they uh, maybe should have won. Uh, But yeah, pretty uh, and disappointing uh, way that the season has been going, uh, particularly given uh, what seemed to be some signs of life um, and some signs of uh, maybe improvement uh, here and there earlier in the season. Yeah, and I, I don't want to, you know, sort of dogpile on the soccer team because they have shown improvement, even if their record hasn't necessarily shown it, because pretty much every time that they've won a match in the last like three years, Connor and I have treated it like an early Christmas gift because for all intents and purposes, it kind of was, but at least now this year, even though they're not getting, they're not picking up many victories. Well, they haven't won in quite some time. They look better. They look significantly better than they did before. But again, sometimes Sometimes you can do better, but get less lucky. Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning as well that K-State's been down, I think, like four or five starters pretty much the entire conference slate. Like, I think there was at least two or three starters got that got hurt back in, like, the very beginning of non-conference. So they've been 
I kind of like personnel wise, like this is already a team that like, like uh, was like never going to be top of the table, but we really didn't need to kick them while they're down. I mean, that was a little disrespectful, I think, but <laughs> yeah. And it, it didn't get much better with the matchup against Arizona state, a pretty solid Arizona state squad. They entered the match seven, five and three end up walking away with a two nil victory ends up doubling us up on shots and the two shots that ended up costing the match were in the 20th and 85th minute. So I, you're not going to win many matches when you get double upped on shots, 15 to seven. I, it, it was just one of those days in, I imagine a very hot temple Tempe, Arizona, because there's no other Tempe, Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Um, not much to say about this one either, honestly. I mean, you said it well. I mean, we got doubled up on shots. Um, we actually had the advantage in corners, uh, which I found to be a bit interesting. We had that six to five. Um, and then fouls, um, we also had the advantage there. We only had six. Arizona State had eight. Um, and then, but we did get a couple of yellow cards late in this one, I imagine, with some um, desperation. Joe Cease, we got a a uh, yellow card again. Like she's had a yellow card like almost every match. She might be like the most carded player in the entire conference. Like <laughs> I think she wears it as a badge of honor at this point. I have no idea if that's true or not, but it is remarkably consistent how often I see uh, Joe C's number 17 and then a little yellow rectangle next to her name. <laughs> Points for consistency, I guess. That is true. There's one thing that's consistent on this team is that Joe C's will make a stupid tackle like somewhere between the 80th and 90th minute. So <laughs> we can rely on that at least. Free yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not much to say about this Arizona State match. The next one, <laughs> up against Arizona, a really good Arizona squad entered this match 9-5-2. K State ends up falling five to one. <laughs> it took Arizona the second minute to score their goal. K State scores there in, in the ninth, and then Arizona pretty comfortably runs away with it in the 18th, 31st, 54th, and 64th minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 19 shots compared to five, three on goal compared to nine. Murphy Sheaf could be a Hoover and it almost wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. I mean, Sheaf, um, who's normally been pretty solid for K-State, uh, this is not her uh, banner night whatsoever. I mean, any night that you have more goals given up than saves is uh, pretty brutal. Um, but there was a point in this match where K-State actually did tie it up. We tied it 1-1 uh, one, one, uh, in the ninth minute, but that was just for Arizona, for Arizona to go ahead again in the 18th minute uh, a little bit later. Um, and they added another uh, penalty kick in the 31st uh, to make it a 3-1 at half. And then the, it was probably all set and done from there. Uh, but a, a pretty poor trip down to Arizona. Uh, for the soccer cats, um, Arizona gets to uh, ten wins on the season as well. Uh, just a, uh, a pretty brutal matchup uh, for for K State in this one. Um, Josie's I, didn't get the goal though. She that is true. Josie's did get the goal. Uh, a, a goal for Josie. She traded her yellow card uh, for a goal in this match, uh, which which is respectable if nothing else. Uh, but yeah, um, talk about the wheels really uh, falling off uh, for the uh, soccer team, which I guess you can maybe argue that they were never on uh, if you if you want to be super cynical. Um, but yeah, they sit at the very bottom of the Big 12 conference right now. Um, even Iowa State uh, is a bit ahead of them. Iowa State did uh, pick up a win. I don't know who they beat, but they beat somebody. And uh, Houston even. Uh, is one and nine, uh, so which I think we beat Houston last year, uh, which I think we did, which 
I'm like now kind of scrolling through our uh, schedule and I'm realizing we really kind of got the short end of the stick <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to scheduling. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, we got Colorado, Utah, BYU, West Virginia, Texas tech, uh, Arizona state. Uh, the only teams bottom of the table that we got were Iowa state and UCF who we drew. And then uh, Cincinnati, I think we lost to them. Yeah. Two one. Uh, so uh, we, we got a pretty tough draw um, as far as uh, the conference slate goes. Um, and only one game remains uh, at this point, which, again, we like, we always marvel about it. But, I mean, uh, the soccer season does go by uh, really, really quickly. Um, and it's it's about over um, because this team, I think, is – I think they're eliminated from the uh, Big 12 tournament. Uh, I, I just I don't think that there's a mathematical possibility that they could make it in. I'm looking at I don't think that they could. No. Um, no, they can't. So, and I it's not as if anything interesting would happen uh, if they made it so. No. I you know when the last time that the soccer team recorded a victory was? Um it was like September first, right? It was exactly September first up against South Dakota. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's been a minute, man. It really has. And uh, since then, uh, draw against Arkansas State, O two loss to number seven Memphis, and then a lot of losses, a couple ties in there to some fellow cellar dwellers, and then more losses. Yeah, it, it it's hard to feel good about the progress when you can like see it. And then you look at the box score, and you're still losing by the exact same amounts. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty frustrating that um, even though like there were definitely points of the season where visually um, it looked better, uh, there there was points where I thought that we like actually looked somewhat competent compared to recent memory. Um, but I guess the uh, does it really matter? I guess is the question if. But like like you said, like does it really matter if we're still losing, like every single match, <laughs> uh, and like does it matter if we're like eight years into uh, the the experiment, uh, so it could be called, and we're really not that much better. I mean, I think it's fair to say that we're not as bad as we were when we started, but uh, the uh, we've. Put it kindly, we've plateaued a bit over the last four or five seasons. Uh, so, yeah, and as much as I will joke about, you know, shutter soccer, start softball, softball would be just as bad. The only difference is I like softball more. So, selfishly, I would have replaced it with a softball program. <laughs> yeah, I think if given the, well, you know, I don't know. I, I think I'd. Th- equally enjoy a really good soccer team and a really good softball team. But I think I'd rather watch a bad softball team than a bad soccer team because bad soccer is just really bad. Uh, Bad softball, like at least something might happen occasionally. (laughs) Like I got an accident. Uh, But I mean, we're going like matches without goals, like pretty often uh, with this, uh, this soccer club. But I do agree with you. I think that, like I think the softball team is a, uh, it's like the uh, backup quarterback in non-revenue sports for K State. Uh, yeah. It's always it's always the most popular um, because it's the one that we haven't seen and don't have. When in reality, it's probably just going to be like a Garrett Green and Nico Markiel situation, and where for West Virginia, where like you said, it's it's really not a guaranteed immediate success. Uh, and even if it were, like I mean. Let's like let's like play the odds here. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, you know, uh, just south of Kansas, are two of the top programs in the entire country. Uh, if we want to talk local recruiting, uh, it's not helping KU at all. KU no. has sucks at softball. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh gosh, um, the number one pitcher in the country last year, uh, Nyjah Kennedy, uh, she was at Stanford, even though she uh, was from Topeka. And she transferred, and she didn't come to KU. She went to Texas Tech. So, softball, 
is not the saving grace that I think people want it to be. With that being said, if we just, if we had a donor step up and say, I'll give, you know, like a hundred, like $200 million to K-State and I'll earmark like 40 million of it to start up a softball program. Then sure. All right, let's do that. Like somebody wants it that badly. I'm totally fine with, <laughs> with doing the way. That's going to be us, Connor. It's gonna be us, right? Once this, once this ad rev hits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the lone match for soccer left on the season is the Sunflower Showdown. So, funnily enough, you get a full weekend of football, so- Sunflower Showdowns, both in Manhattan. So, if if you're in town and have nothing better to do, go. I guess. <laughs> I do feel pretty bad for people that don't have something better to do though. I, I will put that out yeah. there. Yeah, that, that was sort of the insinuation. <laughs> <laughs> but now we can move on to the Volley Cats who have at least one bit of good news followed by two close-ish losses and then one abject disaster that isn't having to do with the results of the team but rather with one player. But we can start with the positives. K State beating up on, or not beating up on, but beating West Virginia three sets to two. Uh, K State took the first set, 26 to 24, and then West Virginia took sets two and three, 25 to 22 each. K State flipped the script in set four, 25 to 22, and then dominated the last set, 15 to five. This was a West Virginia team that entered six and 10, had not picked up a big 12 victory at to this point. And then quietly K state collects their fourth big 12 victory in this match, which it doesn't feel like that, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, volleyball uh, through this match was uh, really kind of turning a corner, uh, which was a little bit surprising uh, because I mean, it had been just an absolutely brutal start. Uh, to the season, um, but they really did kind of uh, seem to have things figured out coming into this West Virginia matchup. And, and this matchup specifically, the offense really came from four people in particular. Aaliyah Carter led with 17 kills. Meg Brown and Liz Gregorski each had 14 kills. And then Brenna Schmidt uh, had 10 kills on 16 attempts with zero attacking errors. So a wildly efficient game for Brenna Schmidt in the middle as the middle blocker. Uh, so a, a really a quality game uh, for her. Um, but beyond that, um, Izzy Shulchewski had 53 uh, assists in this one. As um, one does. Yeah. And uh, I think she recently, I think today, the day that we're recording this, that is, uh, crossed 3,000 across her career at both Oregon State and K-State. Uh, so a pretty huge accomplishment there. Um, but yeah, the, the, this was a really tight matchup the whole time. And then just that last set just kind of like jumps out at you, just out of absolutely nowhere. K-State not only doubles up, they triple up <laughs> West Virginia in the last set. Yeah, and I, I think that was sort of the the no more Mr. Nice Guy moment where they just decided, all right, yeah, we're gonna we're going to put this game away. And you can kind of tell just by the hitting percentage because K-State hit nearly 300 <laughs> in that last set. So, you know, it was a, this was a solid victory, especially away from the friendly confines of the morgue. So it, they chopped out Morgan Family Arena for Morgan Town. So maybe, maybe the morgue part of it's actually just what's keeping them afloat here. <laughs> that might be it. But... Yeah, the next matchup, unfortunately, didn't go K-State's way despite the opportunity for it to have done so. And that was up against, I think at this point, they're like number six in the country, KU in Lawrence. They answered this match 14-1 and with an unscathed Big 12 record. But K-State put up a fight, you know. They ended up forcing five sets, just fell, unfortunately, to the last one. K-State won sets one, three, at one and three, 25 to 19, and 25 to 22. KU wants two, four, and five, 15, 25 to 15, 20 to 
25 to 20, goodness gracious, and then 15 to 10. So full disclosure, this was more fight than I thought they were going to put up, up against a top ranked team in Lawrence. But again, that I think that might just be the power of rivalry games, even in non-rev sports, weird stuff just kind of happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, I was very pleasantly surprised uh, to um, see the fight that K-State put up in this matchup. I really had zero expectations. I figured we were going to go and get swept and go home. Uh, but no, this one really came down to the wire. And arguably, it's one that K-State let get away in some ways, although I do think a big part of uh, why they lost uh, was the uh, really a devastating injury um, that Liz Gregorski uh, picked up um, in this one. Liz Gregorski, who has uh, um, really come around as of late and kind of found her stroke. Uh, she was uh, seven kills on 20 attempts in this one out of a couple of attacking errors. Uh, if you block assists and three, uh, two digs, that is. Uh, she... Uh, um, ends up uh, amending her knee pretty badly uh, in this one, and uh, it was confirmed that she did tear ACL uh, in this one. So uh, really, really tough loss in a season where KC just could not afford that because, um, I mean, you're already in a, a pretty tight spot uh, record-wise, and you've really shrunk the margins to an unsustainable uh proportion at that point because uh, uh, losing who uh, had really kind of been uh, the uh, um, the big surprise of uh, the season on the attacking front um, was Grigorski. Uh, that's a that's a season killer right there. Yeah, and even despite that, there are still some notable performances. Aaliyah Carter, 15 kills. Ezekiel Shesky, 51 assists. Ella Larkin, 26 digs. So uh, you, you get some still you get still pretty solid performances from Aaliyah Carter, Meg Brown, Shaley Myers, Izzy Shulshevsky doing Izzy Shulshevsky things. But again, it just comes up slightly short up against KU, which I I'm not one for moral victories, but it I thought it would be worse. So we take these. <laughs> we absolutely take these. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the sad state that we're at um, at this point of the of volleyball season, volleyball season. I mean, it's really too bad uh, because this team had such high expectations uh, coming into the year, and it's uh, um, it's really a shame uh, that the season has turned out the way that it has. Granted, it is far from over. Uh, there's uh, over a month left uh, in the season, uh, quite a few games remaining. Uh, so uh, uh, there's still plenty to play for um, at this point, and the NCAA tournament is looking uh, very unlikely. Um, but you know, there's say probably like a one percent, two percent chance at this point still. Yeah, and that they had the opportunity to sort of solidify any hope up against Utah, which was another really, really good team. Entered this match fifteen and three with a five and two Big Twelve record, and th- this is kind of one of those where I think K State. This was one that weirdly enough, I think K State let get away because there were a lot of opportunities in this match for K-State to start separating and end up winning. They they won set one, 25 to 21. Utah led, I believe, for the duration of the second set, 25 to 22. And then K-State blew, I think, what was a five-point lead in the third set, 26 to 24. And by then, it just the last set got away from them 25 to 19. It really is that third set that annoys me most because of the lead that they held and just how, how they just kind of let it get away from them, which is weird because if you look at their hitting percentage, they hit very, very well (laughs) during that set still. But again, it, this is, I'm always more frustrated by games that, get away from like, even if it is by, by record superior competition, I get really annoyed whenever there's opportunities and they prove that they are in it. And then they just let it slip through their fingers. I would almost rather get absolutely decimated because at least then we know that, yeah, that wasn't our day. But again, just 
barely coming up short and choking away a few leads is it, it's just sad. It's just really sad. Yeah, I I was pretty annoyed at this one as well. I mean, this is a brutal way to lose. At one point, they led this match nineteen to twelve. Um, and another, they led uh, twenty-one to fifteen. They also led twenty-three twenty um, at one point. And they even tied it up at twenty-four all um, to get back in it. And then a uh, um, two consecutive kills um, from Utah um, put it out of reach. And then the last set, I think, K-State just ran out of gas. Yeah. I like they kept it kind of close there up until they um hit that last media timeout. Uh, and then Utah really just went on a run and Casey just couldn't stop them. Uh which uh, it's a shame. Um because I I like, like this like K State got out there and like won the first match against a ranked team and I was thinking maybe we're back uh to kind of those old ways um like that we saw last year. Um but no, it was uh, unfortunately um, uh, not meant to be um, in this one. Um, yeah, K-State did hit really well, but Utah hit even better. Um, K-State hitting uh, 289, um, Utah hitting uh, um, a 300 uh, in, in this one. So um, just uh, yeah, couldn't quite get it figured out, which is uh, just wildly frustrating um, for – um, a team that's had a lot of opportunities this year, but like you're, you're running out of time. Yeah, and that that's I think that's sort of the story up to this point is they they are running out of time, and unless they pull an Aaron Rodgers in what like so 2009 running the table, the whole running the table bit, something like that. I can I don't know. I was like 10 years old in, in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unless they they run the table, which includes teams that are ranked 13th, 23rd, 18th, which, by the way, those games are back to back to back. Number nine again, and then number 21, unless they run the table their 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 hopes of any postseason are nil. And even then you're you're getting into one or two percent chances, like you said earlier, Connor, which. Again, it is disappointing, and I know we've talked about it before, but it's been like three weeks since we talked about it. But good lord, this team has been disappointing. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guess if they went out or win like nine of their last ten, I think they have ten games left. Um, they there's a chance that they could get saved by just their like nuts out of conference strength of schedule, even though they didn't actually pick up any wins. Uh, the they might have. They might just game the RPI just right, if, but it, that requires them to win out, and I don't think they're going to do that unless they make some pretty serious changes and get Liz Gregorski like a bionic knee or something, and sneak, sneak Sydney Bolding back into the lineup. But <laughs> give her the Casey Eziegu leg. <laughs> she needs the Robo leg, man. I, <laughs> But uh, yeah, this a real disappointing volleyball season. It's unfortunate because, uh, I mean, like one, it's one thing with soccer for them to not be that great because they haven't ever been. Like they've only made it to the Big Twelve tournament once, and that was to get the honor of getting blown out by Texas in the uh, <laughs> first round. But as volleyball team, there were some pretty serious expectations there going into year two at Mansfield, but. Uh, it's been a bit of a down season for them. I say it, but it's really been a down season uh, relative to expectations. Yeah. But the next two matches for K-State are Iowa State in Ames and then West Virginia. They get the return matchup in Manhattan. So at this point, it, it is worth noting that the Iowa State game is on ESPN2. So mainline television. But at this point, the volleyball season is what it is. I'm I don't want to say that I'm not emotionally invested at all because it is a K-State team, so I I will pretty much always be emotionally invested at least somewhat. But let's just say that if the women's basketball team did anything close to what the volleyball team is doing, I would start walking eastbound on the west side of I-70. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> yeah. don't do that. But <laughs> the uh, I, I guess a uh, silver lining uh, is if you're kind of sick and tired of uh, soccer and volleyball. Next week's weekly weekly recap, we're going to be talking about men's and women's basketball because uh, they start next week. Uh, the exhibitions, at least, uh, the men playing Tuesday uh, against Fort Hayes State. October 29th, and then the women the following day, October 30th, against Washburn. So uh, there's been a ton of anticip- anticipation uh, about uh, both of those teams. Uh, they have media days. So nothing interesting really came out of those other than, uh, which I think we already even talked about, it was Max Jones uh, being uh, one of the uh, people there. Like, that was interesting, and it seems like based on chatter, he might be a starter. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll be able to talk about them. We're going to get a, a first glance, a first public glance at them um, uh, next week, and we'll talk about it on the show, which I think is going to be a, a nice change of pace for the uh, weekly recap from the uh, constant uh, depressing topics of the K-State non-revs. Yeah, this these episodes are why the, the wacky segment of the week existed. I don't know why it died. I think I just kind of ran out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, we, we just kind of started forgetting to do it, I think. Uh, so maybe I, I'd say we, I guess maybe we can bring it back. Yeah, we'll bring it back next week. If there's anything to bring it back with, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> anyway, you have any final notes before we sign off? Nothing. Nope. All right. Well, if that's the case, thank you all for listening to this episode of the Aggieville Alley Cats podcast. If you want to follow or contact the show, you can follow us just about anywhere at Aggieville A Cats. And if you want to email us, we're Aggieville Alley Cats at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on a more personal note, I am at AC Edward 00. I am at Connor Bouts, we're capital C, capital B. And if you want to support the show financially, please be sure to check out the official Aggieville Alley Cats merch store and the supporters link, both found in our podcast and Twitter bios. But most importantly, thank you all for listening to this episode of the Aggieville Alley Cats podcast. We're come rain, shine, or anything in between. We're here to deliver to you the Kansas State sporting news that you so love. Stay safe, Alley Cats.